Wait one second, let me get something adjusted real quick here. Okay, perfect. Okay, uh, well, good evening. We'd like to welcome you to this uh, virtual community meeting about the 10th Street Bridge Project. Uh, my name is Bryce Atkins. I'm uh, in the city's administration department uh, and currently coordinating grant efforts uh, for the city of Gilroy along with the various departments of the city. Uh, this meeting is to discuss a project that we are going to be submitting a grant for. Um, the grant is the 2023 RAISE grant, which stands for Rebuilding American Infrastructure with Sustainability and Equity. Uh, the funding is coming um, from the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act. Um, it is a federal funding source um, through the Department of Transportation um, and must be used for surface transportation projects that are to improve uh, the transportation system. Uh, what this means is that we can't use the funding for maintenance activities, such as filling potholes or resurfacing streets. Um, it, they're not associated with expanding or improving the city's road system and therefore they won't qualify. Uh, the maximum project under the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act is $25 million. Um, the project's cost, as will be discussed later in the presentation, uh, makes this grant opportunity attractive to complete this work um, because quite frankly, those, those uh, amounts of grant uh, funding available to the city is very rare. Um, the community meeting is intended to engage the community about this project and to address questions or feedback from the community, uh, which is a process that is encouraged by the granting agency. Uh, with that, I will now hand the presentation to uh, Gary Heap, our city engineer, uh, to discuss that project. Uh, so Gary, go ahead and take it away. Good evening, Bryce. Thank you very much for that. Making sure everybody can see the screen here. Um, again, my name is Gary Heap. I'm the uh, city engineer with the city of Gilroy Public Works Department. So let's go through the presentation. So, why are we building the bridge? What's the purpose? This bridge here uh, that we're proposing and we'll be sharing with you this evening uh, will span Uvis Creek uh, and connect 10th Street between US 101 and Santa Teresa, US 1 being uh, the major highway system in the area and Santa Teresa Boulevard, uh, the expressway system uh, that travels along the western border of the city. It's the purpose is also to make safety improvements and you'll see intersection improvements at Uvis and 10th Street with the new roundabout. Uh, it's been part of the city's adopted general plan circulation element for a number of years, in fact, going all the way back to 1978. Uh, it is included in the city's transportation circulation master plan, which identifies the citywide uh, transportation network uh, and would be one of the major, again, east-west arterial roadway connections in the city, uh, connecting the east side of the city at US 101 and the west side of the city of Santa Teresa. It will provide fantastic bicycle and pedestrian connectivity, uh, specifically between the neighborhoods on the west side and the commercial on the east. Uh, and then extremely important is that we'll also provide direct access to the new Glen Loma Fire Station. And we'll show you where that is just momentarily here. So let's take a look at imagery in, in, a, in kind of a map of the area. Uh, let me point out some, some identifying features. So you'll see here, uh, 10th Street here uh, off to the side. You'll see Santa Teresa kind of the bottom of the screen. Uh, you see Miller and Christmas Hill Park here at the upper sections of the of the screen. You see the future Glen Loma Fire Station here uh, within the Glen Loma area. And then you see the bridge location here at the end of Uvis and 10th, uh, taking traffic and bicycles and pedestrians from 10th Street into the Glen Loma neighborhood or vice versa. But you see how it provides here direct access uh, from 10th Street along into the neighborhoods uh, and then directly to Santa Teresa here. Uh, now, one of the questions we've received is that, hey, it'll it'll provide a lot of traffic through here and will be a significant impact to this Glen Loma neighborhood. We'll just know that all the residential units here along this section of 10th Street all have their back facing 10th Street in, in the corridor here. And in fact, all have sound walls to protect them from sound and noise from the traffic uh, along the 10th Street corridor here within Glen Loma, uh, protecting the residential homes. So zooming in a little bit here, uh, there's been some a little bit of confusion that we've understood uh, between this bridge and the bridge we have at Sylvan's Crossing along Miller, which is up here. That bridge itself um, provides direct access to Christmas Hill Park you see here. Uh, this is a separate bridge a little bit further to the south. Again, okay. connecting 10th Street. Yes? If you're pointing out these locations with your cursor, we can't actually see that. So could you describe oh, them? Oh, there it is. There it is. 
See, I'm doing this on the wrong screen. So per, do you want me to go back to the bracket screen here? Let's do that. So you'll see the, the Glen Loma Fire Station here. You see tents, the, the connection here. You see Gilroy High School, um, the Miller along through here, Christmas Hill Park. Uh, and again, that direct connection, 10th Street through the neighborhoods um, directly to Santa Teresa, which is along through here. And again, all these residential properties here uh, have their back facing to the to the 10th Street corridor here within Glen Loma. Thanks for pointing that out, Rochelle. Again, zooming a little further in here, you see where that bridge is here uh, in consideration or, or in relation to the Miller Crossing, which is here, which takes folks, folks from Uvis right into the Christmas Hill Park area. This is a map from our transportation circulation element, um, looking at functional street classifications. Blue is the arterial network system, and you can see how 10th Street, uh, again, connects from 101 along the corridor here. This is the future, that's why it's dotted, connection here, not only the bridge, but through Glen Loma, ultimately to Santa Teresa out here. So now we start looking into the plans a little bit. This is an aerial view of the project itself. Um, you see again, uh, Uvis Parkway along through here, 10th Street along through here. The project itself is, it really runs from uh, the, the Glen Loma neighborhood over here at Deanza Place across Uvis here. You can see the connection points. We'll see that a little better in future images, uh, the levee trail and how that interacts with the bridge, a new roundabout here at the intersection, and then the improvements along 10th Street, providing pedestrian and bicycle connectivity and, and new pathways along the front of the school here, both along the south side and the north side of 10th Street uh, to this intersection here at Orchard where the city recently installed a rectangular rapid flash beacon to provide additional safety enhancements for the neighbors, uh, the, the children and the, and the residents and the students that are crossing from the neighborhood here to get to Gilroy High School, which is right here. We were lucky enough to have the developer, the designer provide us some real neat renderings earlier this week. Uh, happy to share those with you this evening, excited about that. So this is again, that aerial view of the project. You see a little bit better in terms of the connectivity that you have to the levee trail uh, and how the bridge lines up with the new roundabout here at 10th and Uvis. This is an image of the bridge looking north from the levee trail itself. Uh, and you can see how there's a direct access through the bridge area here so that folks using the levee trail don't have to exit up to the roundabout um, to get through the area. They can just use the access here uh, through the bridge to continue along the levee trail. Here's a little closer view of the roundabout. You see the pedestrian enhancements here, uh, the crosswalks here, the high visibility crosswalks. Uh, you see how uh, the bicycle network is going to continue into the roundabout area uh, and then through the roundabout area you're starting to see some of that sidewalk here in front of the gilroy high school better viewed here we're uh, from the looking southeast uh, you see the roundabout here in the distance on the far side of the bridge and you, then you see those pedestrian enhancements uh, on the north and south side of Tenth, as I indicated. Here's another better view of the levee trail itself and how it interacts with the bridge going north and south. So now let's talk about the bridge benefits. Again, I've already talked about east-west connectivity between Santa Teresa and, and 101. 10th Street is a major access point into the city, and it's really important for us to have a, a significant east-west corridor through the city from one side to the other, similar to what we see up at 1st Street. And so this will provide another east-west uh, connector. Uh, provides a bit bicycle and pedestrian connectivity between the residential neighborhoods in the west and the commercial on the east. Um, it also benefits safe routes to schools. Um, students from Gilroy High School, Solar Sano, Glenview Elementary School will use this bridge uh, to get to and from home uh, to their school. Uh, and again, not only provides fire response time, enhanced fire response time, but also enhanced police response time in the area. We're providing another access into the neighborhood. So <clears throat> there's been some discussion and questions about Glen Loma's responsibility in terms of construction of this bridge. Uh, this project itself, the bridge itself was included in the de uh, development agreement 
uh, that was approved for Glen Loma a number of years ago. It, it had some stipulations I'd like to go over and explain. So it, it identified that the city was obligated to design the bridge itself, to provide the CEQA or the environmental analysis for the bridge and obtain all the permits and approvals to construct the bridge. And there's a lot of permits uh, since we're working in and around the, the Uvis Creek channel there, a lot of environmental permits that are needing to be obtained and we're working forward with that right now. If the city then was able to obtain federal funding, it became a city project. Uh, however, if not, if the city did not obtain federal funding, the developer would construct the bridge if, here's the big if, the city had complete funding in place at the time of that construction and would be able to immediately reimburse the developer out of our traffic impact fee program upon completion of the bridge. And in fact, I think the development agreement indicates within 30 days of completion of the bridge. So at this time, and, and unfortunately into the foreseeable future, we don't anticipate ever having the kind of money to actually construct this bridge in our traffic impact fee program to be able to reimburse that developer. So that then makes this really difficult to ask the developer to do and then reimburse through TIF. So we're gonna have to find another answer, uh, need to identify other options for construction. And this is a wonderful opportunity, this raise grant that we've identified um, again, it's part of the federal infrastructure program, uh, and it would uh, fund a significant portion of the bridge. So in terms of cost, let's talk about costs. Uh, recent estimates have the overall project cost at about 26 million. Um, that includes recent, uh, a recent updated estimate from our designer uh, late last year of 20 million, but then there's also soft costs again associated with the bridge. We've got to, to fund the design cost, which is underway right now, and that's about 10% of the overall construction cost. Uh, we have environmental studies and permits that we need to go ahead and, and fund, uh, which we just talked about. Uh, we've got utility relocations that need to take place. Um, we've got construction management and inspection costs that are going to be needed for construction of the bridge. And then the environmental document itself will identify mitigations that are needed within the channel and the areas around. And so there'll be a significant cost to, to the city or to the project actually uh, to go ahead and, and do plant establishment and, and make sure the, that uh, the plants are in good working order and healthy over the next several years. Right away acquisition at this point, we're, we're uh, assuming to be zero. We're working with the school district in Santa Clara Valley Water. Uh, who own the property where the, some of this bridge will be constructed and looking for them to, to help work with us on the bridge um, dedications. Right now, uh, we're at, we've completed 65% design and that was completed late last year. And so we're working on the next phase or the 90% design. We expect the design itself to be completed by the end of this calendar year. Uh, the CEQA is just kicking off right now and underway. Uh, and we expect the CEQA of the environmental study for the project to be completed early in 2024. So maybe this time next year. Uh, we're continuing to coordinate with both the high school district or the Gilroy Unified School District, as well as the high school, Gilroy High School and Valley Water uh, in terms of our needs and coordination on the project. And again, continuing to look for state and federal grant funding uh, to fund this project. This meeting this evening is, is an opportunity for us to try and get input from the community, but we've also created a survey uh, that is out there for folks to take. This has been distributed for a number of social media uh, platforms, as well as the city's uh, email express. Uh, if you'd like to take the survey and, and tell us about the bridge and what you think about it, um, this is an opportunity here. And we can come back to this at the end of the meeting. Uh, but this is the link and then a QR code that you can also use to access uh, that survey. And at that point, that concludes my presentation and I'm available for any questions that might come up. And with that, we'd invite you, if you have questions, if you can raise your hand and then um, we can invite you to talk um, or you can type questions in the Q&A module through um, the bottom of your screen. All right, so I do have a question from um, Tom Fisher. Tom, I'm gonna to ask you to unmute yourself. Hello, how are you doing tonight? Hi, Tom. Uh, Gary, I'm very familiar with this project and, and, and I'm a big supporter. Uh, I'm wondering uh, if we wanna, as citizens, if we wanna 
lobby for this bridge with the with the uh, federal government. Uh, is there a place where we can find out who we should lobby and the the proper names or or uh, I'm sure there's a project number or something that's on there. I I know that when you applied before, when the city applied last time for a grant, uh, a raise grant for this project, I sent letters to uh, several senators and uh, the, the Secretary of Transportation. Is, is there a, uh, a place where we can get that information and make sure that we have the right information on the letters that we send? Right. Yes, sorry, it took a second to, for, to look. Uh, yes, we will have that information again. Um, since it's a new application, we won't have the project number, application number until the application is submitted, um, which is February 28th uh, is the deadline for that. Um, and then we can provide that information. Um, uh, let me see here. I don't know. Um, Gary, do we have a uh, do we have a project page in engineering for this type of project? We may not have that yet. Um, I'm not sure that we do, but uh, okay. if Mr. Fisher would like to provide a letter of support. I'm sure we can include that in the packet, correct? Yeah, definitely. And so uh, what we can also do is um, create a temporary page for the grant as well um, to provide that information on our website. So we'll, we'll, we'll definitely put something up on the website for that. Do, do you think, uh, am I still uh, unmuted? No, we can still hear you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you think maybe when, uh, when you're ready to submit that grant information, you could email uh, that information to all, all of the uh, participants of this meeting? Um, I can find your emails. I don't know if this I asked for it when I signed in, so I assume that you have it. Okay. So I'm not familiar with Zoom that much, but if we have it, yes, I can definitely do that. That would be great. Thank you, Bryce. Hey, Tom, quick question. Did it ask for your email address when you signed in? Yes, it did. Okay. Sounds good. I'll look in the, the back end of the meeting notes and see if I can find those for you, Bryce. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, it asked for uh, the email address, and I assume that it asked for everybody that signed on. I'm, I don't know. The, you know, normally on a Zoom meeting, you can see how many people are on, but I can't see that here. So I, I assume that there's other people here that might be interested in uh, providing some support letters, uh, uh, into particular to uh, our elected officials, uh, Diane Feinstein, uh, uh, Zoe. Uh, a Buddha judge. Uh, I sent letters to like six representatives last time around, and I'll be happy to do that again once I have the information. So I, so I'm actually identifying the right uh, grant application. Excellent. Yeah, we appreciate that, and yeah, we appreciate any support that can be provided. Definitely. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Next, we have um, Connie Rogers. Connie, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself. Hey. Thank you. Uh, my question is essentially the same as Tom's because I've actually lived here since 1966. <laughs> so I know how long this project has been planned and I am familiar with it. Uh, so I would do everything I can. I would like to do everything I can to support it. And if you would like letters to go in with the application, I'd be more than happy to do that. So Bryce, could you tell us, if, you know, do you want letters to go in with the application? Uh, we can include them in the application. The application will generally be viewed only by the grant like scoring uh, committee. Um, so uh, we can have them include with that, but we may also ask for them to be sent directly to, um, as Mr. Fisher mentioned, um, some of our legislators that can uh, can speak on our behalf before these uh, before sure. the department. I, I would like to do both, if that's sure. you know. So uh, my email is jrogers at garlic dot com. Okay, excellent. Thank you. That that's the only question I have. It, everything, all the plans look good. I'm just. I can't wait till we have better connectivity between the east and the west side. As a matter of fact, uh, when Glen Loma development was approved, I believe there was a loud chorus of citizens trying to make this a condition of approval of the development. So um, I don't know what the people who live out there now would say, but I think you know, the rest of us um, say this is long overdue. And 
another reason in favor of it is when they close off Castro Valley Road, we are going to have a tough time exiting Gilroy to go south. And so we are, I don't know what, how the timing will work out, but that's another reason why we really need this east-west connection. Thank you. That's all from me. <laughs> Thanks, Connie. All right, next we have um, Bob Weaver. Bob, I'm gonna ask you to unmute yourself. You. Good evening. I was well, noticing on the rendering, there seems to be in the median a dark spot, and that looks like the same skylight that we put in on the Stevens Creek Trail on Reach 4 in Mountain View a couple of years back. Is that a skylight? You know, I'll answer that question. That in the rendering you see here on the title slide here did show initially a skylight. Um, that is being considered, and we'll look at the overall cost to be able to do that. Um, but one of the things uh, that we're considering, uh, if we don't have that skylight, is to have very high level lighting in that bridge underneath the, or in that tunnel underneath the bridge. All right, because that was a big concern at the time in Mountain View going under El Camino was it's a dark, confined space and public safety was a concern. Absolutely. I think we're all here tonight because we are supporting of this, as I certainly am. And again, I go along with Tom and Connie in wanting to write letters to whoever uh, to be advocates for this project. <clears throat> so if we could all be included in some kind of a, uh, when you get the names, let us know, we'll write the letters. That's it, thank you. Thank you. All right, next we have A. Hearn. Um, I'm gonna ask you to unmute yourself. Uh, I'm sorry, A, are you there? We can't hear you. It looks like you're unmuted, but we can't hear you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move on to um, David. Um, if if we can't figure this out, maybe you can put your comment or your question in the um, Q and A module, and then we can address it there. Um, so, David G, I'm going to go ahead and ask you to unmute yourself. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Good. All right. Took a second there. So. Um, I'm actually a new Glen Loma resident, just moved to Gilroy about a year and a half ago. And I am using the trail that goes into Christmas Hill Park on the west side, uh, not the east side. At least I think I have this right. It, there is a bike path that comes down the hill from our area that kind of goes to a, I think it's a fire road, but it's a dirt path that goes into Christmas Hill Park. And this is where that bridge is going to be located. Is there any um, plan or could there be a plan to make that more of an official entrance in the Christmas Hill Park from the Glen Loma area as part of this bridge build? See if I can go back to some of the imagery at the beginning to show what you're talking about. I believe you're talking about some of the pathways and trails you see here in this area. And I see there's a pathway here that kind of ends at, you know, it was pointed out to me that there's a, a number of different, um, see here's a little bit better here. So we've got the Glen Loma here, we've got a trail system here. I understand folks use use the trail system in here a lot. Can you see my pointer where I'm pointing out here? Yeah, yeah, and that is the one I'm talking about. It's very strange because, you know, there's a, from Lopez Way that you can see it's a paved trail. It goes almost to the levee on the right. west side and then it right. becomes dirt until right. it goes to Christmas Hill Park. Right, exactly. So yeah, folks in the neighborhood way. could go along this pathway here, down to here, and then it's a dirt yes. trail, like you say, that takes you into Christmas Hill Park. So that was yeah. brought to attention recently. Um, that'll be something that we'll have to pick up in design, and I can let the designer know that. So the bridge abutments will be right about in that area. So we'll have to accommodate and have to reroute that path uh, so that it's continuous, so that uh, folks can continue to use that 
east uh, to get underneath that bridge. So um, it's it's great that we have this kind of input from the community for these types of things because we're this is a great takeaway for us. So we'll be able to reach out to our designer and make sure that's a uh, continuous for the uh, project design. Oh, good to hear. Yeah, there's a lot of us on uh, the west side that use that trail, I think. Thanks for the input. All right, thank you, David. Um, I'm going to go back to um, Ahern. I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself and see if we if we're if our audio is working now. All right, A, I'm sorry, we still can't hear you. It does look like you're unmuted, but we just can't hear you. Um, but if you want to put your question in the chat, we're, we're happy to answer that there. Or um, you're always welcome to provide your feedback through that survey that um, Gary mentioned before. Maybe we can pull up that slide again. Um, you can use that QR code um, to go directly to the survey, or you can type in um, the survey link. Okay, so we do... Um, a did go ahead and put the question in the chat and asked, what type of walking access will Gilroy High School students have from 10th Street to the bridge? Where will they be located? Perfect. I'll go ahead and answer that. So I'm leaving the survey page here. So Gilroy High School, go back to the original mapping here. So Gilroy High School is in this area right here. Um, so right now there's really no pedestrian access along the frontage of the high school itself and really nothing at all along the, the north side either. What this project will do is we'll construct brand new sidewalk. You can see it here and how it connects to the roundabout. Brand new sidewalk, 12 foot sidewalk along the frontage of the high school here and then a standard sidewalk on the north side as well that will continue all the way to the orchard intersection uh, east of this uh, location, east of the roundabout here. So these are the improvements and you'll see how then that ties into the levee trail specifically, uh, but also to the bridge itself. And here is a really clear picture. You see the, the wide sidewalks along the bridge and you also see a buffered bike lane here, a bike lane along the edge and the buffering, you see kind of the zipper uh, striping here. That's a, a buffer between the vehicles and the bicyclists that are, that are gonna be using this bridge in the future. All right, thank you. So with that, I don't see any more questions that are open. So if you do still have a question, um, please raise your hand or type it in the chat. And we do have another one here from Tom Fisher. So Tom, I'm gonna ask you to unmute yourself. Hello, I'm back again. Uh, I, I think it's, it's more of a, a statement than a, than a question, but I, I live out by uh, Gavin College in the Mesa Ranch area. And during the recent storms, when the Silva's Crossing was closed, uh, the the traffic coming on on Santa Teresa Boulevard was, uh, I'll call it extremely uh, high level. There was a lot of traffic, way more than we're used to seeing uh, on Santa Teresa in the mornings and in the afternoons. And and I think it's important to point out uh, in your grant application how that. Uh, closing of Miller Avenue uh, at Silva's Crossing, which happens pretty much every year for a period of time, and sometimes multiple times during the, during the winter if we have a lot of rain, uh, and, and how that impacts uh, the, the community in, in accessing the spaces where they wanna get. And once this bridge is built, a lot of the traffic that crosses at Miller will be on 10th Street. And, and that would be a real benefit, I think, to the community. We'll definitely include that in the application. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, we do have one more um, comment in the Q&A from Ahern. Um, they state, I would like to suggest some type of buffering along the sidewalk you just spoke about. And Gary, I don't know if you want to go back to that image and just kind of talk about the differences in the width of the different sidewalks, because if I remember correctly, you had mentioned that that sidewalk on the side of Gilroy High School was going to be an extra wide sidewalk. Right. So this is what's going to be considered uh, realistically a class one bike and pedestrian uh, multi-use trail, if you will. And that'll be separated. You'll see a little bit of separation here from the roadway itself. Um, you do see bike path, a class two bike path along the roadway that's striped as well. So folks will have two options. They can either 
They can come across the bridge um, as a bicyclist. Uh, they can go ahead and get up on the sidewalk. They can go through the circle if they feel confident. They can get up onto the sidewalk, travel along the sidewalk, exit the sidewalk and get back on the street, or they can continue along the sidewalk here um, along the frontage of the high school there. So there's a couple different options. You see it's wider on the south side of 10th Street, again, being uh, that class one multi-use trail as compared to the north side where you just have our city standard five foot sidewalk. Hope that answers your question. Thank you, Gary. Um, we do have David G with um, a hand raise. So David, I'm gonna ask you to unmute yourself. Yeah, can you hear me? Okay, uh, actually, my apologies, it's not a 10th Street Bridge question, but uh, it's the Luchessa Bridge. Um, is there any way to take advantage of this kind of grant funding to try and do a improvement on Luchessa for pedestrians? Because right now it's, <laughs> it's a little scary. So uh, you basically have one project that we get to put the application for. Um, and, and so at this point, the 10th Street Bridge has been identified for those multiple purposes. The grant that we have for Department of Transportation really doesn't focus on pedestrian. It does as far as like pedestrian safety as part of a larger component <laughs> project. So the entire intent is to expand the uh, basically the roadway network. Um, so the Luchessa Bridge, um, unfortunately, I don't know too much about that one and, and, and where that is and, and uh, any type of uh, future projects. But the 10th Street Bridge is uh, as close to shovel ready as we, as we can to, to apply for this grant. Um, but we can definitely keep that in note for future grant uh, grant opportunities. Um, we do know that the raise grant will come back for a couple more years um, of the funding cycles. So um, we'll we'll keep an eye out for, for opportunities where maybe the Chessa might be a, a qualifying project. Definitely. Okay, thank you. All right, and then next we have um, Tom Fisher again. So Tom, I'm gonna ask you to unmute yourself. Hi, I'm back again. Uh, this time I have a question. Uh, I'm wondering uh, how how many uh, participants do you have in this community meeting? Uh, currently, we're showing eleven attendees. All right, thank you. That's that's not not as good as I would have hoped, but thank you. All right, and then we do have a question in the chat. Uh, the question is, are there any plans for a stop sign or stop light placed at 10th and Orchard? Good question. So, so like I spoke about earlier, we recently did uh, some pedestrian safety improvements with the rectangular rapid flash beacon crossing. Uh, once this project is constructed, we will continue to monitor that intersection. And if and when it does meet the, the necessary warrants, we will be moving forward with the project to put a signal at Orchard and uh, 10. So yes, we will. All right, and with that, I don't see any more questions. I've raised hands. So if you do have a question, we've got another one in the chat. It says, will the roads have speed bumps to make sure folks aren't driving too fast? That's a really good question. Um, I could refer you to our city website that has a, a document called our Neighborhood Traffic Management Plan, or NTMP. And the NTMP uh, specifies clearly what our design criteria are for uh, traffic calming. And speed cushions are a traffic calming tool. Uh, what it basically says is that we allow traffic calming physical devices like the ones mentioned there, like a speed cushion, uh, on residential streets to help with speeds and to help with diversion through neighborhoods and, and on some collectors. But unfortunately, we don't allow vertical devices on major thoroughfares, uh, roadways where we have police and fire access, emergency vehicle access. You know, the last thing we want to do is slow down a, an ambulance trying to get to one of our loved ones and, and delaying roughly six to 10 seconds per speed cushion. Uh, as they're as they're slowing down to go over those uh, to get to to get to where they need to go. So unfortunately, no, we do not allow those along arterials and, and 10th Street is an arterial. Uh, but we would load, include those or allow those in any of the adjacent neighborhoods if we do see uh, significant cut through traffic being caused by for this project. Hey, Gary, actually, I do you want to mention like the fact that you know the roundabouts have a slowing effect too. I mean, absolutely. 
Absolutely. There's a couple different options for the intersection here. A uh, stop sign clearly is one. Uh, a roundabout is another. Um, roundabouts have been shown to provide a significant improvement uh, for safety over signalized intersections and even stop controlled intersections. They they maintain the flow through the intersection in a in a nice manner, uh, and we see that on Santa Teresa where we've got a number of roundabouts. We, we have smooth flow of traffic around those roundabouts. Folks aren't waiting for you know, 20 seconds, 30 seconds you know, for a signal to cycle. Um, they're just easily uh, able to travel along the corridor there through the roundabout areas. One of the nice things about roundabouts, and I'll get technical here, it, it actually reduces the conflict points at an intersection. Uh, and for a four-way intersection, I think there's 32 different conflict points between left turns and through movements. Uh, that are potential where conflicts may occur between bicycles, pedestrians, and vehicles. Having a roundabout here uh, slows traffic down. It is a traffic calming device uh, in actuality, and it provides that smooth flow of traffic while providing some very clear pedestrian and bicycle safety enhancements, uh, including wider sidewalks around the roundabout, and then clear pedestrian crossing areas there, like you see on that image with high visibility crosswalks and pedestrian refuges uh, in the middle of those intersections as folks are crossing if they don't feel uh, or have the ability or feel confident to cross all in one, one time. So um, these are significantly more safer than some of the intersections, um, stop control or signal, and uh, we're excited about the opportunity to put one here. And Gary, I'm wondering if you can pull up that um, wider map, uh, because this isn't the only roundabout that's on this section. Once we, um, once a bridge is in place, um, it does have another roundabout. Yeah, right there. Yeah, so there's a, this roundabout is proposed here that we just saw. There's also a roundabout here. Are on the other map? Yeah. <laughs> at, least I'm not, at least I'm unmuting myself when I'm talking. So um, we got a roundabout here that's proposed, the one you saw there, um, looking at the orchard intersection here we just talked about. Um, roundabouts are good and easy to put in when we have open space to be able to do that. They're hard to retrofit in to an existing neighborhood because they take up such space. Um, so, but you'll see in the Glen Loma area, there's a significant number of roundabouts along this corridor, which do provide smooth flow of traffic and traffic calming uh, along this 10th Street corridor here here and then ultimately down at Santa Teresa, you see the other roundabout here, another roundabout up here at third, and then uh, some additional ones along the, the corridor there. Great, thank you. Is that what you wanted me to point out, Rochelle? Yes, thank you. We have one more question. Um, will there be lighting on the bridge for um, walking and pedestrians? Yeah, that's not shown on the image uh, right now, but there will be um, pedestrian scale lighting on that bridge, which will light it up very well. Uh, and make it safe for uh, pedestrians and bicyclists to use that bridge uh, at night. As well as like we talked about earlier, uh, some very high intensity lighting underneath the bridge in that tunnel. Perfect. So once again, that's all of our questions. So if you do still have a question, please raise your hand or type one in the Q&A module. Oh, we do have another hand raised. Uh, this is Tom Fisher. Um, um, four times a charm, man. I'm just going to ask you to unmute yourself. Uh, you knew I'd be back, right? This right, is more right. of a conversation at this point, Tom. We're loving <laughs> it. Yeah. Uh, uh, a comment first, and then, and then a question uh, that's less related to the bridge. But the, I'd like to comment on the roundabouts. Uh, I think that's one of the best things that, that the city of Gilroy has done is to put these roundabouts in. They really have improved traffic on Santa Teresa. And, uh, you know, there are occasions when uh, we we run across drivers that don't really know how to use them, which is a little bit of a challenge. But for the most part, they really have smoothed out the traffic on on uh, Santa Teresa Boulevard and every place else where I use them. Uh, the other question that I had was that on on Luchessa, where the uh, uh, Glen Loma is supposed to build a bridge between uh, where the fire station is and the Bally Bunyan neighborhoods. Have you? It's not related to the 10th Street Bridge, but do you have some idea when that bridge is going to go in? Let me see if I have an image that clearly shows that. I think you're talking about. So it's along the Luchessa here. So I think you're talking about the right here, on the other map? Canyon Creek. Oh, wrong map. Right here. Yeah, that's the spot right there. Yeah. So Glen Loma is in the process right now of developer uh, 
building up this last couple phases here. Uh, and the, as a condition of approval uh, for these phases, we're going to be requiring the developer to build that bridge. Ah, okay. Thank you. That's yeah, very key and very important for us, especially with that fire station, to make sure that the fire station itself, uh, let me just slip there, so that the fire station itself has access um, you know, to this area here without having to go all the way out and around to Santa Teresa and then back in. Along right, and that, and that bridge will take a lot of traffic off of Santa Teresa as well. Yeah, well, well, yeah, yeah, I believe so. Sorry about the, this seemed to float on me with the sliding. That's all right. It's a minute ago. Thank you. We're not building a fire station in the middle of the road. <laughs> okay, we have one more question in the chat. The question is, what will the speed be on the street and the bridge? So I'm assuming uh, they're talking 10th Street and the 10th Street Bridge. I'm sorry, what will the what be, Rochelle? The speed limit. Oh, the speed limit. Um, that's a good question. I don't know I, off the top of my head. I'm assuming it'll be continuous uh, in terms of what the speeds are in the area, either more than likely 25, potentially 30, but I'm guessing 25. All right, any additional questions, please raise your hand or type them in the chat. And I don't see any more at this time, so I think we're ready to wrap up. Perfect. Any closing words, Bryce or Gary? I just well, first want to uh, say thank you for spending the time with us and, 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 and being engaged and active. And we really appreciate the offers for the letters of support and the advocacy. And we will definitely take you up on that. Uh, and we'll get that information out. We'll create a page on the website. And we'll see if we can uh, pull the uh, email addresses off of the system as well. And, and have some direct communication as well. But uh, we just, again, really want to thank you for, for your support of this project and the grant application. And, uh, and we're looking forward, hopefully, to, uh, to funding it and, uh, and finally getting this project underway. All right, thank you. And one last comment from Connie. She said, thank you for this excellent meeting. And with that, we'll go ahead and close out for the night. Have a great night. Good night, all.